Hello, my name is Christopher DeLay. I'm a premier field engineer for Microsoft Services. And this is part two in a series of covering um, the steps necessary to upgrade your PKI from Windows Server 2003 to Server 2012. As I mentioned in part one of this series, um, the same steps could be used to migrate a uh, certification authority that's installed on 2008 uh, Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 to Windows Server 2012 as well. So in part one of this video, um, we covered backing up the root CA. So uh, again, this is a migration process that we're using to upgrade this PKI. So we're, it's basically a backup and restore process. So in part one, I covered backing up the root CA. In this, um, in this video, we're going to cover restoring the actual root CA to a Windows Server 2012 machine and going ahead and um, have some discussion around decommissioning the old CA. So we're going to go ahead and do a demo of restoring the root CA to a Windows Server 2012 machine to complete the migration process. So here's my 2012 machine. Um, in part in the first video, I went ahead and installed the ADCS binaries on my Windows Server 2012 machine, and I also showed that I renamed this machine to the same name as my old root CA, so it has the same host name. I also copied my backup folder from the first um, the, from the backup I took in the first video that contained a uh, backup of the database and log files and CA certain private key as well as the configuration that's stored in the registry. So I have that on my C drive. So now I'm going to go ahead um, after I install the ADCS binaries. I get this little alert here. So I'm going to select configure Active Directory services certificate services on the destination server. So it's asked me for credentials. This is not a domain joined account, so they're only local credentials. Um, and in this particular uh, demo environment, I have not renamed the administrator account or anything. So we're going to go ahead and go with the default here. And I am going to be configuring just the certification authority role service. So this is an offline root CA, so it is of course going to be a standalone CA. So I uh, keep that setting and collect, uh, select next. And what sort of CA is this? This is a root CA, so I'll keep it at root CA. So now I need to bring over the key from my backup. So I'm going to select use uh, existing private key. And then I'm going to ensure that select a certificate and use its associated private key is selected as well. So this will then allow me to import the uh, CA certificates and private key from my backup that I performed in the first video. So I'm just going to click import here. I'm going to go ahead and browse to my uh, backup here. So I'm going to see backup, CA backup, and I'm going to select the PFX file here. Um, when I created this backup, I created a password to protect that PFX file. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in that password. So now it's going to go through the process of importing um, that CA certificate and private key into the uh, machine's door on this server. So I just want to make sure I go ahead and select that and then go ahead and click Next. I'm going to keep the database and log files on this uh, C drive. Um, for a root CA, this isn't a big deal because a root CA doesn't really do all that much. Occasionally issues a subordinate CA certificate or a CRIL, but it's not going to be heavily used. If, if this were issuing CA, we may, you know, think about moving this to a different volume. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And so we're going to let this go ahead and do its thing. And so here it here's a list of the options that I've selected and I'm just going to go ahead and click configure. Okay, so configuration succeeded. So I'll click close there. To open the Active Directory Certificate Services tools, I'll just click on tools and then certification authority. So my CA is up and running. However, 
what I don't have is I don't have the log file and databases in here yet. The, these are the log file database uh, files are going to include uh, you know list of certificates that the CA has issued, um, which is going to be the most critical things, as well as other information around request and revocation information. So to go ahead and import that um, database and log files, I'm just going to expand this out. I'm going to right click on my CA name here. I'm going to do all tasks and I'm going to do restore CA. So it has to stop Active Directory Certificate Services uh, for the restore operation to complete so I click OK. I'm now going to browse, I'm just going to click next and then uh, items to restore. Um, I just want to restore the certificate database and certificate database log file so I'm just going to click the checkbox for that. I'm going to go ahead and browse to my backup so this should be um, my CA backup folder here. You notice that includes the database folder in here. So I'm just click CA back, select CA backup, click OK, and click Next, and click Finish. Uh, so the restore operation is complete. So just click Yes to start the uh, certificate services. Um, as certificate services loads up here, it's going to go ahead and import the database and log files. So if you look, I have my issued cert. So this is a root CA that only issued one cert. So it looks that look, it looks like the import of my uh, database and log files was successful. So the last step I have to do is import the configuration for the CA. So that I had stored in a registry file. So what I can do here is just go ahead and import. my config backup stored here in the registry. There is an additional step you can take um, kind of as a precaution. Again, um, so if I just open my uh, registry editor, I can go ahead and take a backup of the configuration currently on this CA. So I can go into current control set services. Cert service configuration, right click on the C name and do um, export. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that in the same folder. I'm just going to call it a config backup from new CA. Quite a file name there, but it's not really important. It was important is that I'm just getting a backup of that. That's just in case I run into any issues like the CA service won't start because. Um, there's some mismatch in values or something like that. So I have that done. So now I'm just going to go ahead to uh, import my uh, backup from the root CA. Just do merge here. And then just click yes. And then OK. So now I have the configuration has been restored. However, I have to restart certificate services for that new configuration to take effect. Before I start certificate services, just to kind of show you that there will be a configuration difference. We'll take a look at some of the settings in here just so we have something to compare to after we do the restore. So let's just look at my extensions. So you go ahead and look at my extensions. It looked like it actually looks like it actually pulled the configuration information already. Okay. That is interesting. So it looks like it pulled some of the configuration information already. Just to make sure that it definitely does pull all the configuration information from the registry, we'll just go ahead and stop and start the service. And so there we go. So we should just be able to look in here and see that my configuration is pulled over. I looked at revoked and go to properties. I see it's set at six months like my previous CA was set up. So I have successfully migrated my root CA from Windows Server 2003 to Windows Server 2012. So I'm all set as far as this is concerned. 
So um, since both my CAs are virtualized, you'll notice I did this while still having my old root CA online. And the reason that is possible in this particular instance is because the um, root CA is generally offline, which means it's not part of Active Directory. And since I'm not using HSM, I don't have any kind of shared items between these two CAs, so or or one that I need to put on one and, ta and take off one and put on the other. So I can do this process while I still have my old CA. So now I'd want to go through and decommission this box. So you know, if it's a physical machine, obviously take up take whatever steps you normally do to decommission a physical box. Uh, in terms of this, this is a virtual machine. This is a kind of a demo environment for me, so I would just go through and delete the VM from Hyper-V and then go out and delete the um, VHDX file that backs this VM. So there's really not much in the way of decommissioning for the root CA for me. So I've basically gone through all the steps. In part one of the series, I've backed up the root CA. And then in this series, I've restored the root CA. And then the next process for me is just to decommission my old root CA. So in the next video in this series, we'll talk about um, backing up the uh, issuing CA. So we're talking about migrating a two-tier PKI. So there's both a root and an issuing CA. Um, the steps are pretty similar. There are some additional considerations, consider an Active Directory is involved. Um, so because Active Directory is involved, there are some additional things that we need to get in the backup and some additional steps we need to do when we bring the, uh, the 2012 machine online. So that's it for part two of the series. Um, thank you for watching. Feel free if to uh, visit my blog or um, come back and watch the rest of this video series. All right, thank you.